Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, tankers of all ages, Sir Harry here again with another user-friendly tank video, a series where I like to feature a mid-tier tank that's fun to play, relatively easy for less experienced players, and goes somewhere on the tech tree that you want to go. It has great tanks at higher tiers. And today we're featuring a tank that is near and dear to my heart, and I've had a couple of requests for this tank too, so that's easy. This is one I actually considered using as my initial user-friendly video to submit to the Jingles 500,000 subscriber contest. Uh, the T-151 out just because I think it's even easier easier to play because of the armor, obviously. Uh, this does not have that problem as far as armor goes. Uh, but it's the Crusader. It's a British Tier 5 light tank. Uh, like the Covenanter that we talked about in a previous video, it, it plays a little bit more like a medium, really, but it has some of those perks that light tanks get. It has the camo bonus while you're on the move, and it doesn't get light tank matchmaking. Just like the Covenanter, it gets regular matchmaking, so you'll never see anything higher than Tier 7 in this tank. So that's a really big bonus as well. So let's head to the garage, we'll take a detailed look at the Crusader, and we're going to do a head-to-head -head comparison against other counterparts at Tier 5, both light tanks and medium tanks, because as I said, this has a bit of the characteristics of both. So looking at the base stats of the Crusader, it has 450 hit points when fully upgraded, which isn't a lot. It's not terrible for a Tier 5 light, but you definitely want to conserve your hit points. You want to make sure that you're keeping out of trouble and uh, not giving the enemy any more shots at you than absolutely necessary, because those hit points will disappear quickly, especially if you get up into Tier 6 and 7 battles. Armor, really not much to speak of. 40 in the front of the hull, 28 on the side and the rear. The turret has 50 in the front once you get the uh, top turret, and 23 on the side, 29 on the rear. Now you notice the side of the turret's actually pretty well sloped, uh, it can get a little bouncy, as we might see in one of our replays coming up in a little bit. For speed, uh, not great. This is one of the letdowns for this tank. Again, for a light tank, it only has a 44 km per hour top speed with the uh, top engine, but it does go 22 kilometers an hour in reverse, and that's actually pretty good. So you can pop up over a ridge, you can spot, you can take a shot, and you can get out of trouble before the enemy can return shots at you. And combine that with the fact that this tank has 12 degrees of gun depression, which is fantastic, uh, makes it just a great ridge fighter and spotter, and it's able to bob and weave up and down hills and over crests and wreak havoc with the enemy. Now while the engine's a little weedy and the top speed is not great, this tank is pretty maneuverable and it's got actually a pretty good hull and turret traverse. 40 degrees per second for the hull and 46 for the turret gives you a combined 86 degrees per second and that turret can swing around fast enough that you can circle around enemies, especially big slow lumbering TDs and heavies, and you can put shots into them and they won't be able to do anything in return. So pretty maneuverable and, and kind of like the Panzer III-IV, not quite as quick on the traverse, but uh, it can be a pretty good little close-in knife fighter. One other area where the Crusader does suffer a bit is view range. 360 is not terrible, but if you're going to take a passive scouting role, which is a very, very prudent thing to think about in, say, a Tier 7 game, uh, you definitely want coded optics, and, and you may even want binos, and that'll give you that extra view range. You can max out and spot the enemy before they spot you and help your team out and get a lot of spotting damage, too. So I'll take a quick look at the tech tree. I did a deep dive on the British tech tree in my Covenanter video, but just in case you didn't see it, uh, some pretty fun little light tanks up to tier 4 through the Covenanter, and then of course the Crusader leads to the Cromwell, which is one of, I, I would say, one of the best tanks in the game, one of the most fun to play, uh, up to the Comet at tier 7, which is one that gets mixed reviews. Really good players seem to like it, but you do have to spam a lot of premium ammo because the penetration on the gun's pretty weedy. And then the Centurions at tier 8, 9, and 10 are among the best mediums in the game to me. They're a lot of fun, they have great gun depression, really punchy guns, and uh, not as fast as some of their tier 10 counterparts, but they are great tanks. So taking a quick look at the guns that come with the Crusader, you start off with that 2-pounder Mark 10. It's pretty weedy, and you want to get up to that 6-pounder Mark 3 as soon as possible. You do have to unlock the top turret, though, before you can unlock that gun. If you've already researched the Grant or the Churchill 1 on other lines on the British Tech Tree, you should have that 6-pounder Mark 3. And it's almost as good as the 6-pounder Mark 5, the top gun. Uh, it only suffers a little bit for accuracy and penetration. So looking quickly at the modules for the Crusader, you can mount the top engine without unlocking the top tracks, that's great. Unfortunately though, you cannot mount the top turret and that quick firing 6-pounder Mark III until you have unlocked the tracks. So you have to bite the bullet, get the tracks, and you'll see you do not actually need to research the quick firing 6-pounder Mark V uh, to get to the Cromwell. So if you plan to keep the Crusader, absolutely recommend you get the Mark V, but it's not a must. And you'll see at the top there, there is a 3-inch howitzer. I'm not a big fan of the British derp guns. I find the shell trajectory is so slow, the flight is so high on the shells, it's almost impossible to hit anything unless you're right next to them. And with almost no armor, that can prove a little hazardous sometimes. 
So if you do decide to keep the Crusader, you want to unlock the Top Gun, the 6-pounder Mark V, 27.3 uh, rounds per minute rate of fire is amazing. And you throw a rammer on this, maybe have pudding and tea to get your crew skills up a little bit. I've got my reload down under 2 seconds. 110 pen for AP, 180 for APCR with 75 damage for both. The HE rounds are 30 pen, 100 damage, so you might use them if you come across some arty or low armor targets. 0.41 accuracy is where this really falls down, and you'll see rounds flying all over the place in my replays, nowhere near the aiming reticle. And a 2.3 second aim time isn't terrible, but because the reload is so fast, you either have to choose to wait to aim after the reload, or just spam the rounds as fast as you can reload them and sacrifice accuracy. So let's go to tanks.gg, look at the armor profile of the Crusader. As I mentioned, it's not particularly well endowed with armor. The upper and lower glaces only have 20 millimeters. That's not going to stop a lot. And, you know, certainly higher tier tanks are going to have no problem putting high explosive through that and wrecking your tank. That little 32 millimeter band on the front there might stop something, but again, you can't count on it. Uh, there's that little driver's block, their viewport there. Uh, a bit of extra armor, 40 millimeters, still not fantastic. Once you upgrade the turret, you get 50 millimeters on the front. Not great. You might bounce some stuff from tier 3 and tier 4, but you're fighting tier 6 and 7. That turret is not stopping anything. One thing to note, the top of the turret is only 12 millimeters of armor. You have to be really careful if you're fighting a taller tank, say a T1 Heavy or an M6. He could get a high explosive round down through that, no problem, and absolutely trash you. 70 millimeters right there around the gun. There is no gun mantlet on this tank, and some people think the Brit tanks around the gun are very weak. This is actually the strongest armor on the front of the tank at 70 millimeters. So does angling the tank improve anything? Well, unfortunately, the answer is no. You can see at this extreme angle, that's much more than 45 degrees. The 20 mils on the front, upper and lower glazes only become 23. That's not going to stop anything. And the 28 on the sides at this angle become 32. So again, you know, tier 3, tier 4, you might be able to bounce some stuff, even if you're angled like this, but it's not going to stop anything at higher tiers. And even at that extreme slope, the uh, turret armor, 23 millimeters becomes 31. Again, you might get lucky. It is very, very steeply angled, and you might bounce the odd shot. So here we are in the tank compare in tanks.gg. I've got the Crusader matched up against three mediums and two lights to kind of reflect the hybrid nature of the tank. We're looking at the Panzer 3-4, the Skoda T-24, the M4 Sherman, and then the Chaffee and the Leopard are the two light tanks we're looking at. And what jumps off the page right away, look at that DPM, over 2100 damage per minute. Only the Chaffee is even in the ballpark. And of course that's due to that sub two second reload on the Crusader once you get a good crew and the rammer on there. You're doing 110 pen, which isn't bad. It's sort of middle of the pack. The two uh, mediums, the Skoda and the Sherman are slightly better. Uh, the damage though of course is where this kind of falls down a little bit. Only 75 damage but again with that rate of fire uh, the damage adds up really fast. The shell velocity is almost 900 meters per second. That's actually pretty good. It's only second to the Skoda and the Leopard. It means you can lead targets. Uh, it makes it a little easier to hit but with that really poor gun accuracy you will struggle sometimes at range. And one other thing to note only 65 rounds are carried by this tank so you have to be really careful. Exercise fire discipline because you can run out of ammo. So taking a quick look at the gun handling, you can see the Crusader's aim time is on par with the mediums that we're using in our comparison, but both light tanks have significantly better aim time than the Crusader does. And the Chaffee can mount a vertical stabilizer, so that gun bloom does not get as big when you're moving or turning, and it takes a lot less time to aim, so it has a really big advantage over the Crusader. The uh, dispersion values are kind of mixed. Some are better, some are worse than the tanks we're comparing against, but that 12 degrees of gun depression, only the Sherman has the same, and the Crusader is such a low target, it has an advantage over the Sherman when working ridge lines. Looking at armor, we've already talked about how the Crusader does not have a lot of armor, and you can see here it's worse amongst all of these tanks with the exception of the Chaffee, but you would expect that, of course, because the Chaffee is a true light, fast tank. The view range 360, middle of the pack here, but if you're going to use the Crusader as a passive scout in a higher tier battle, you absolutely want to put optics or binos on it to extend your view range and allow yourself to make a meaningful contribution to the team. So for our first battle, we're in a Tier 6 battle on Serene Coast. Uh, pretty good matchmaking. It's uh, it's Tier 6, but there's only a few Tier 6 players on each team. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. Uh, you can see there are some relatively skilled players on the enemy team, some pretty dangerous ones. Uh, their Cromwell B driver is pretty good. Uh, they're a pretty good player driving their Nashorn. That's a very dangerous German uh, tank destroyer. And their M44 player, the artillery uh, player, is, is quite good as well. And, and, and I'm in a very lightly armored tank, as we've discussed. So I am very concerned about that artillery. And if, uh, if I get spotted and he drops around on me, my game could be over pretty quick. 
So I'm heading to this bush complex here in the middle. This is a very high risk, high reward position. Uh, you can get spots off on tank destroyers sending up amongst those rocks directly in front of me on the other side of the valley. And you can usually get spots off on medium tanks heading up to one line, which is where they tend to congregate on this map. You can see that I've got really, really good uh, camouflage from three directions anyway. And uh, the only way I'm going to get spotted is if an enemy tank drives down into that gully in front of me and proximity spots me, or an enemy tank drives up the east side of the railway tracks to my left and again proximity spots me. So I'm in a pretty good spot. Uh, you see the enemy Crom B and the M4 start moving up the one line as expected. Uh, I take some shots, but the accuracy, of course, of this gun at this, these ranges is just not going to do it for me. And an AT-8 appears. Uh, I'm never going to pen that with regular rounds from this range, even broadside like that. But at least because I'm shooting him, he has second thoughts about pushing up to support his mediums and actually falls back. So that's great. Uh, his gun is not in the fight right now. Enemy KV-1 decides to push up the one line. He's a bit late to the party and probably won't be able to contribute. And a Panzer IV-D drives up. He was probably hanging back there deciding what to do. Saw his teammates die and decided he had to get into the fight. I put one lucky shot into him and he's hiding behind there, but he's not completely concealed. I missed the first shot, but I managed to hit another. And that puts him into absolute panic mode now. He gets hung up on the rocks. He tries to back up, but of course he gets hung up again. I get a lucky tracking shot in, and in two shots, I take him out. So I go back to passive spotting, and, and things seem pretty good on the western flank here. We seem to have secured things, but there are a couple of enemy tanks unaccounted for. We haven't spotted them in a while. Uh, you can see the M4 now starting to push up, and uh, he's behind the rocks. I, I move ahead. I aim forward of him. Uh, try to get one shot off. Of course, that misses. He's behind the ridge. And uh, wait for him and get a shot in. A little late, but I'm super lucky to track him. That uh, locks him in place, and you can see there that uh, between my team and I, we finish him off. I get spotted. I'm not sure who did spot me, if it was the Nashorn or another tank out there. But I back up really quickly and I kind of jink around a little bit I'm thinking that most of the enemy are going to be much more worried about my colleagues uh, to the west there on the one line And uh, maybe not even notice that I was spotted So I, I jink around a bit and then I notice that the rest of the team on the one line is pushing This is one of those moments as a light or medium tank driver You really have to judge carefully When do you decide to push forward and exploit and go ham? Uh, as soon as our Cromwell B decided to go I figure you know what this is the time He's a good player he knows what's going on And uh, I decide to come up and back him up there He's faster than me of course so he's going to get around the rock quicker we know that Nashorn was last spotted back there so he pulls around he spots the Nashorn gets a shot into him I auto aim and because my tank was up on the ridge of little sideways there my shot sailed over the Nashorn so that was kind of a, a bit of a donkey move by me the AT-8 still back there I put one shot into the dirt uh, but then I decide to slow down let my turret turn and get two shots into the AT-8 to kill him so the Krom and I decide to keep pressing south, and uh, we're going to see what we can see around the enemy cap. We take the long way around, because if we just went to the uh, east there and crested over the tracks, we don't know entirely what's there, and, and we don't want to get surprised. There is a T-67 that was spotted there, so very, very, very dangerous American Tier 5 tank destroyer. Very high rate of fire gun, and, and it can do uh, not a lot of alpha damage per shot, but again, the rate of fire is so high that uh, he could burn me down pretty quick. I still have all my hit points, and, and again, I pull a little bit of a donkey move here. I do crest the tracks a little early, looking for shots on that Panzer IV H, but uh, my team takes them out, and so I decide to press on against the T-67. You can see him there. I lock onto him, and I'm putting shots at him while I'm moving here, not so much with the intent of hitting him. I mean, it'd be great if I did, but it's really more kind of suppressing fire. Hopefully, if he hears rounds ran, uh, landing around him, then uh, he might keep under cover and, and not be as uh, eager to push out. So I take one more hit, and I figure, you know what? I've got enough hit points, and he's got a very slow traversing turret, and I'm, I'm pretty maneuverable, so I come around the corner, I lock onto him, and I manage to take him out there before the M4 gets there. I don't think the M4 was super happy about that, as we'll see in a second. I try to get a shot on the M7, but uh, he was already taken out by my team. And watch the M4 here. Uh, I think he put a shot at me out of frustration because I took the kill on the uh, T-67, um, letting his anger get the better of him. Uh, we team up on an ELC who's now in full flight, and uh, no, he's not going to get away there, especially with this rate of fire. I spot the M44, and I, I wasn't moving across his front fast enough. He manages to get a shot into me. He was a very good player, as I said, and so he takes up my engine, tracks me, and uh, I managed to burn him down there. You'll see to the side, I didn't spot this initially. There was actually a Hellcat in there. And we talked about the armor of this being really terrible. You can just see the Hellcat in the center of your screen come up from behind that wreck. And bang, he ricochets a shot off the Crusader. Full broadside shot. It looks like it might have gone off the turret. I can't tell for sure. Uh, or else off my right uh, rear panel quarter there. 
But holy cow, a bit of luck there, and Erin Jesus was definitely on my side in this battle. Looking at the battle results, Ace Tanker, always great to get. Bruiser damaged some modules. Duelist, I exchanged fire with a couple of other enemies. And the Top Gun, of course, for six kills. Fire for effect, because I did more damage than the hit points on my tank. 1,039 XP, 1,267 damage. I was only four short of being tied for top in the battle in damage with the Hellcat on the enemy team and our Krom B. Uh, not a huge profit, only a little shy of 6,000 credits with a premium account because I was using pudding and tea. I was trying to three mark this tank. I had two there, as you could see, and so I was running pudding and tea to try to uh, maximize the effectiveness of my crew. So for our next battle, it's another tier 6 battle, this time on mines. Uh, pretty good matchmaking. There's about half a dozen tier 6s on each team, and almost all of the rest of both teams are tier 5s. A uh, little concern because uh, the enemy team, most of their better players are all in their top tier tanks, while our team, uh, our better players, are in lower tier tanks. So not as big a deal. It's only a one tier spread, so everything should be okay. Uh, the M7 says he's going hill with me, and I'm watching him, watching him, watching him, and no, he's not going hill. So here I am, all by my lonesome, everything hanging out in the breeze, and uh, I look over to prepare to auto-aim if it tank is spotted. T3485, a pretty good player on the enemy team is there. Uh, I do manage to get two hits into him before I get behind cover here under these rocks. I do not stop there because good artillery players will pre-aim that location. So if you're spotted in a light tank, you get into that spot, you think you're safe, you're going to get killed by Artie sometimes. So you saw there the enemy M4 chased me up the hill and he's heading around the east side of the rocks thinking I'm going all the way over there. So I double back. Uh, by the time he realizes what's going on, you can see there he starts to come back. I'm already almost all the way around. I've already pre-aimed on him and and uh, come around the corner, he misses, I get two shots into him and take him out. So that's great, another dangerous tank on the enemy team. He wasn't firing the derp gun, thankfully, because that could have really put some hurt on me. But uh, he's out of the play anyway. And I've pretty much got the hill to myself now, so that's great. I decide to head over to the east and see what's going on. And holy cow, it's a shooting gallery, fish in a barrel. Uh, almost all of the dangerous enemy tanks are over here. You see the M4A3E2, the KV-85, a couple of SU-100s. This is great. So I start putting rounds in everybody. Uh, I don't back up in time. I get my second shot. I think, oh, I'll get a second shot into the KV-85. And no, not good. Uh, he had the 122, it looks like. He did a fair bit of damage to me there. did 386. Average damage for the one. 22 is 390. Uh, he probably couldn't have one-shot me, but uh, he did uh, did take a big bite out of my hit points. And I don't know if you noticed there, uh, my radio man got damaged. I I'm probably the only player in the history of the game to ever use a med kit to heal their radio man. I don't know why I did that. Just the heat of the battle, I, I heard injured and, and automatically hit that five key. So uh, heading south here, I get spotted by that KV-85 down at the base of the cliff. Uh, he's within 50 meters of me. I was looking for Artie, but of course I don't want to hang around there. Uh, I back up, I start to jink around a little bit give myself about 10 seconds and then I start to creep up to the edge of the hill again I did spot the gorilla and I did spot the panzer 3-4 uh, before I can kill the panzer 3-4 our team takes them out uh, I put a bit of a wide shot at the gorilla there but then managed to land three shots in a row before our team takes them out the panzer 3-4 and our team manages to kill them so that's great one less artillery player in the game uh, best kill arty kill so I decide to head over to the uh, west here a little more but you can see it's pretty congested our m7s there uh, our panzer 3-4 is there so there's not much for me to do I'm just going to get in the way. So I decide now, you know what, the guys in the east have probably forgotten about me after I uh, took a couple of shots at them there. So you can see here, uh, one of the SU-100s is almost dead. I, I can't get the gun down enough to hit him, but the other SU-100, I've got his side shots. Uh, I do get four shots into him, uh, bounce a couple, and uh, finally finish him off with two more. And uh, you can see there, he actually is gracious enough. He's on very low hit points. He decides to back up into my shot. So that was fantastic. And our Panzer 3-4 there finishes off the SU-100. The enemy T-34 that was over on that side is now in full retreat. He's backing down around the corner, running back to his heavies. He takes a big hit from something there. Again, I try to peek over, but ever since they introduced physics into this game the, a few patches ago, I'm very reluctant to try to run down cliffs like that. I've died a lot in light tanks uh, trying to navigate my way down steep hills. And, and so I just decide, uh, you know what, a better not try that. So their KB-220-2 uh, is there, and that's a pretty rare Tier 5 premium tank. Uh, it's essentially a KB-3 hull with a KB-1 turret on it, so if you run into those things, shoot the turret. Do not shoot at the hull unless uh, you have really high pen and you're shooting premium rounds or something. Uh, the, the turret is essentially the weak spot on that tank. So I decide again to come around rather than try to navigate my way down the cliff face. You can see our TOG here. Hi TOG! 
Tog is doing a great job keeping their KV-85 uh, suppressed. It is actually doing some good damage. And then, like a boss, I decide to come in and, uh, you know, kill steel. maybe. I don't know. I don't really do that. But I get a shot into the KV-85 and take him out. He's on very low hit points. And I have the rear of the KV-220 now, so that's fantastic. Uh, get him taken out uh, with a side shot. And uh, the M37 spotted here at the end, and I race over to try to get him. But uh, our team kills him before I have a chance. Our artillery actually takes him out. So that was a great battle. I was really happy with that one. Uh, it was, uh, you know, pretty fast and furious. It was not a long battle. I think it was only about five minutes. But uh, we had a pretty good part. We had the hill to ourselves. I was quite surprised with that after we took out that M4. And look at that. Finally, third mark of excellence. Really happy. Really, really, really happy. Uh, I don't know how many battles I, I fought in the, in, the, in the Crusader to try to get that thing, but eventually got it. It was only a first-class battle, but that was enough. Fire for effect and fighter for four kills. And uh, if you're going for a, for a mark of excellence, you have to perform better than a certain percentage of players that play that tank in the last uh, certain period of time. It's based on your last 100 battles. And uh, you have to play that tank a lot to really pick up the nuance and get proficient at it so absolutely worth doing tier five and up tanks pick one maybe that a lot of people don't play uh and uh, just stick with it and 870 xp 1037 damage not too bad uh 10, 000, uh, credits out of that one you see i'd stopped using the pudding and tea by that point because I, I got lit on fire a few times and 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 decided to start packing a fire extinguisher again so that's it that's a crusader a great little tier five british light tank again a lot of characteristics of a medium and uh just a lot of fun to play and, and and you know what you get the cromwell at the end of the day too so that's that's even better. Uh, this is Sir Harry. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave your comments. Consider clicking subscribe and letting me know if there's a tank you'd like to see a user-friendly video made of. Thanks again for watching. Cheers.